Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the conference call of Polus. At our customer's request, this conference will be recorded. As a reminder, all participants will be in a listen-only mode. After the presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. May I now hand you over to Victor Drozdov, head of IR, who will lead you through this conference. Please go ahead. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our first quarter uh, 2020 financial results conference call. Uh, today we have uh, our CEO, uh, Mr. Pavel Grachov, and our CFO, Mr. Mikhail Siskin, presented. Um, they will provide you with an update on uh, the first quarter financial results. And at the same time, we're going to provide you with uh, some additional uh, updates on, uh, on the uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, spread in Russia. Uh, so with that in mind, I'll pass the floor to uh, Mr. Pavel Grachov. Uh, Pavel, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Victor. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining our call. The first quarter of 2020, we posted a 32% decline in the top line and 33% decline on EBITDA compared to the previous quarter due to a 39% drop in sales volume of refined gold and flotation constant during the period. Such decrease in the sales volume is mainly attributable to the timing of the refine rather than production process. The volumes of direct gold produced were only down 8%, as it normally happens due to seasonal stoppage of the legal operations. The discrepancy between the gold direct produced over the quarter and sales volume of refined gold is a common development, meaning that a significant amount of gold was left unrefined at the end of the quarter and will be processed later this year. As we have previously highlighted, we advise to follow volumes of the red gold production when assessing our operational performance as opposed to refined gold. The company now uh, continues to progress with the development projects across its portfolio. In addition, we are finalizing feasibility studies on a number of new brownfield projects and will provide a detailed overview of those late in 2020. So main greenfield projects, Hoylok, we are processing with the infill drilling program and the pre-feasibility study in nearing completion. Now I would like to comment on the most demanding topic at this moment, spread of COVID-19 and its potential impact on the company's operations. Back in early April, police introduced strict protocols across all of our operations to minimize risk of possible spreading of the virus among its employees. This included special access control arrangements requiring all rotational employees to be tested for COVID-19 prior to their transfer to police sites. Visiting vehicles had to get disinfected before entering sites with drivers required not to leave the cabin until they leave the site territory. We started to disinfect all communal, uh, communal areas and operating facilities on a daily basis, wherein PPE is monitored at all of our sites. As of the moment, the company has completed the both road-based testing program. Throughout the duration of the testing program, which began in mid-April, there was a substantial growth of police employees with COVID positive tests resulting in the Olympiade mine. The vast majority of those infected with the virus have not been shown any symptoms and have been placed in isolation at the mine site. Police is working closely with the authorities on both federal and regional levels in order to minimize the spread of the virus at the production site. Temporary isolation centers have been set up at the site as well as mobile hospital, which helps the company provide necessary medical care to its employees. All of those employees who have received positive test results and any categorized as being high risk are receiving repeat testing a substantial number of police employees who had previously tested positive for COVID-19 have fully recovered from the virus and have been now discharged from the quarantine and medical facilities. And we expect this positive dynamic to continue and bring volunteer operation back on track in the coming days. I will now hand over to Mikhail, who will provide a detailed overview of both our financial performance, the first quarter, and additional color on development related to the virus. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Pavel. Hello, guys. So in terms of our top-line performance in the first quarter, gold sales uh, amounted to 872 million, 
We sold uh, 544,000 ounces of gold in physical volumes compared to 894,000 ounces in the previous quarter. As mentioned during the operational results conference call, this reduction is a reflection of lower sales volumes of both refined gold and flotation concentrate during the period. Over the course of the first quarter, we sold approximately 3.5 thousand tons of flotation concentrate containing 11 thousand ounces of gold compared to approximately 62 thousand tons of concentrate which contained about 170 thousand ounces of gold in the fourth quarter. Similarly to the first quarter of 2019, Polis conducted a marketing campaign to secure future deliveries to foreign off-takers and we have seen a mild improvement uh, in the payability terms compared to what we achieved last year. Separately, I would like to underscore that our first quarter sales were wholly comprised of merchant gold-containing uh, flotation concentrate, and there were no sales of antimony-rich flotation concentrate in this period. As a result of lower sales uh, during the uh, quarter, our inventories of concentrate at Olympiada shot up, so they went up from 29,000 tons to approximately 51,000 tons, uh, and approximately 45,000 tons out of it is antimony-containing product. So the shipments are expected to be accelerated. We currently anticipate that we're going to sell approximately 30,000 tons of concentrate in the second quarter, but uh, most of the shipments, as, uh, as usual, will uh, take place in the third quarter and the fourth quarter of this year. Now, looking at our cost performance during the period, our TCC increased by 16% quarter and quarter to $394 per ounce, uh, and that is uh, below the lower bound for our guidance at 400 to 450 Now, the quarter and quarter increase is driven mainly by uh, three factors. Uh, lower head grades at Olympiata, a smaller share of flotation concentrate, and finally, uh, no byproduct credit from antimony. Now, separately at Natalka, our TCC increased tangibly by approximately 10% to 414, and that reflects scheduled maintenance at the mill, which was uh, brought forward from the end of last year to February this year and also a temporary uh, several percentage point decline in recoveries as a result of the installation of the new uh, uh, rubber steel uh, lining at the mill. So we are working to improve our recoveries, and uh, they are below target. We expect it to bring uh, it back to target in the second half of the year uh, as we calibrate the uh, lining performance first, and secondly, uh, we complete the installation of the flash flotation uh, circuit and the first uh, machine, uh, the first flash flotation machine is currently being, uh, is currently being installed and uh, fine-tuned. Now, at the group level, our quarterly EBITDA uh, went down to uh, 589 million compared to approximately 880 million in the fourth quarter. And that's mainly a result of lower volumes of gold uh, plus uh, higher TCC. Still, uh, our EBITDA margin stood at 68%. That's one percentage point decline from the fourth quarter level. In terms of CapEx, we spent 124 mil in the fourth quarter. Now, uh, I'm sorry, in the first quarter, we expect to catch up uh, during the remaining nine months. So the guidance will remain unchanged at uh, 700 to 750 million U.S. Also, uh, the macro assumptions underlying our GCC and CapEx guidance remain unaltered, so that's uh, Forex of 60 on the gold price of 1,200. Now, looking at the, uh, the dynamics of net debt position, um, so our cash and balance was approximately 1.9 billion. Uh, net debt, including derivatives, stood at approximately billion compared to 3.25 at the end of the fourth quarter. As you can infer, free cash flow generation was fairly solid. Um, free cash flow uh, came in at uh, 260 mil. So as a result of uh, lower net debt position in absolute terms and uh, adjusted EBITDA expansion over the previous uh, 12 months, 
our net debt to our EBITDA ratio came down to 1.9 times, which is the lowest level in, the, uh, in our public history since the relisting uh, on the London Stock Exchange and Moscow Stock Exchange several years ago. Now, as for factors which impacted our liquidity position after the end of the reporting period, so we repaid uh, the euro bonds in full. I mean the, uh, the uh, 750 million euro bond, out of which 677 mil was outstanding post the buyback. Uh, plus, there was an accrued interest of 17 mil, which was also settled. Now, we also uh, completed the redemption of the convertible bonds uh, with a nominal amount of 250 mil, and we delivered approximately 4.5 million DRs to bondholders uh, as a result of this settlement. Now, as I mentioned uh, during the operational results call in April, we are seeing a negative impact on our financials coming from the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic outbreak at KBU and uh, the preventive measures we are taking at all other assets. So over the course of 2020, we currently expect to allocate approximately 70 million US to finance COVID-related activities. This will cover, first, the extension of the workers' shift, plus uh, the uh, voluntary uh, decision of the company to temporarily increase the pay of the staff for either continuing to work or uh, quarantine, or who are on quarantine or who are, who are fallen sick uh, due to the uh, virus. And B, the cost of protective gear, temporary accommodation, various medical equipment, and support to the medical uh, centers in the regions of our presence. So out of the 70 million, 60 million is expected to be operating expenses, and 10 million is expected to be uh, capital expenditure. Uh, very limited uh, expenses were incurred in the first quarter, uh, so the bulk of it will be uh, taking place in the second quarter and uh, some remaining volumes in the third quarter. Now, we also expect a working capital build-up in the second quarter as we accelerated uh, shipments of consumables to ensure the safety of operations. So the first quarter was an outlier in this respect. We had a uh, uh, tangible release of working capital in the amount of 40 mil, which uh, improved our EBITDA to operating cash flow conversion to a record level of 92 million. This will not be sustained. This is due to the settlement uh, payment from our Chinese off-takers for the previously shipped uh, concentrate. So this will reverse in the second quarter, and you're going to see uh, a material buildup. Now, in terms of our... Uh, Project schedules, as we said previously, we expect some extensions uh, uh, in terms of deadline, uh, uh, in, terms of, in terms of completion deadlines, uh, but it's not expected to be uh, significant. Now, we are continuing to apply efforts to uh, ensure continuity of our operations and on schedule project execution while assessing any potential risks on a daily basis. As we uh, said, we are seeing modest downside risks to our production guidance for 2020. We will provide the market with a full update during the time of the release of the trading update for the second quarter. At the same time, we are comfortable that TCC guidance is unchanged at 400 to 450, and also our CapEx guidance is unchanged at 700 to 750. Uh, so thank you for your time, and we're now ready to take your questions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now start our Q&A session. If you wish to ask a question, please press zero one on your telephone keypad. Thank you for holding. And our first question comes from Daniel Major, UBS. Please go ahead. Oh, hi there. <clears throat> Thanks for calling. Can you hear me okay? I can hear yeah, you sure. well. Go ahead. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, a couple of questions. Um, uh, firstly, just on the reference to the additional costs associated with um, COVID-related measures, will they flow through the P&L through total cash cost um, principally, and uh, where should we be seeing them through the yeah, so through the financial statements? That's the first question. All right. Hello. 
So and in terms of the 70 mil, as I elaborated in my speech, 60 million will be operating expenses, and uh, it will be both in COGS and SGNA. Uh, most of it will be in COGS, and uh, also we are intending to exclude those costs as one-off and non-recurring. So when we when we are confirming to the market our TCC guidance, this is X uh, non-recurring uh, COVID-19 related expenses. And the same will apply to EBITDA. So uh, the uh, additional uh, cost that we have incurred will be excluded. But obviously will be fully reported and we will do sort of uh, a detailed uh, uh, in disclosure on that. Okay, got it. So the, the, the 400 to 450 guidance is excluding those one-off costs. Correct. Okay, thanks. Um, and then uh, second question is just on the working capital. Um, can you give us any range of, of you, you sort of say there will be a material build in the second slash third quarter, can you give us any um, more tangible guidance on the magnitude of that? Uh, well, I, I don't think I should at this point. Uh, it will be tangible, but uh, nothing groundbreaking. So there will be an increase uh, uh, in the inventories of concentrate. There will be an increase in the uh, in the amount of consumables we are storing, uh, and that's uh, uh, with an aim to uh, ensure the continuity and safety of our operations. And finally, there will be an increase in, uh, uh, in the amount of ore that has been previously mined and that is due for processing. So it will be tangible, but again, uh, nothing uh, sort of groundbreaking, as I said. Thank you. Okay, great, thanks. And just and, uh, top final and, one. And, uh, yeah, yeah, then just one point. And bear in mind that uh, some of it will be uh, will be unwound in the in the second half of the year. Okay, cool. And the very last quick one. Um, can you sk give us any update on the expected timing of the um, Suhoi Log uh, or Black Datno expansion updates? Your latest thoughts on it? Yeah, so we, uh, as, as I said at the uh, trading update call, so the feasibility study for uh, Blagadat and ML5 and pre-feasibility for Sukolog have been delayed. So we previously anticipated to complete that work and announce it to the market in summer uh, 2020. We now anticipate this will take place in the second half of the year for both projects. Got it. Great, thanks a lot. Our next question comes from Dan, Sean, Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Hi, um, yeah, Dan from Morgan Stanley. Um, there's just the first one on, on uh, the reduction guidance where you're flagging some risks there. Is this purely in relation to coronavirus or are there some other factors at play? Um, and then just following on from that, um, well, actually, just just uh, just to elaborate on the first question, is it basically at the Olympiada where you see the the, the risks coming from uh, from the production side, or is there some other operations as well where you, where you think uh, they might be performing slightly less than where you expected them to be originally? Um, and then, yeah, just the, the second one um, on capex. Do you see much impact here from, again, what's happening with coronavirus, for example, not being able to get personnel on site for certain projects? Um, so can we expect any, any CapEx uh, delays from that, or is that, is that not a factor? Thank you. Yes. Uh, hi. So, in terms of um, the sort of downside risks that uh, we currently see when it comes to our production guidance, this is due to COVID-19 outbreak and uh, consequent uh, uh, production uh, changes. Uh, we are experiencing uh, uh, a material labor shortage. Uh, 
when it comes to mining, uh, particularly at Olympiada, not so much at Blagodatne. So we have slowed down the amount of uh, rock moved uh, significantly. And uh, this has a, an immediate bearing on our uh, production schedules. And this has actually uh, a bearing on this year's production schedule and potentially on next year's production schedule. So we, we have uh, cut down on the amount of stripping uh, and uh, reallocated the remaining uh, staff uh, towards uh, uh, ore mining. So ore mining hasn't been affected, but stripping has been affected. Uh, and uh, secondly, when it comes to uh, the virus outbreak, uh, the area that has been affected most is actually uh, uh, repairs and maintenance that uh, unfortunately now has to be uh, deferred. Also, exploration has been slowed down. Uh, that pertains to infill drilling and uh, exploration drilling. And uh, finally, the construction activities also have uh, slowed uh, down materially. Uh, so in terms of uh, answering a second question on the capital expenditure, that, you know, first of all, again, capex in the second quarter will be below our initial expectations due to the uh, factors mentioned above, plus at other operations we are experiencing slower uh, delivery of some uh, critical equipment, so uh, maintenance and repairs uh, will be uh, sort of slightly below target as well. But uh, most of the changes, they are really at KBU and not at other operations. But in terms of caps expansion for the entire year, as I said, it is our anticipation at this point that we will be able to catch up in terms of uh, project um, delivery in the second half of the year, which is why the guidance is unchanged. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next question comes from Nina Virgunova, Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Uh, good day, gentlemen. Thank you very much for presentation. I have two questions. Uh, first relates uh, to your CapEx and TCC guidance. As you mentioned, uh, it rests on macro of uh, ethics of 60 and gold uh, 1200. Uh, but here to date, FX is 70 rubles per dollar, and uh, gold is at 1,600, which is 16% and 30% ahead of your base assumptions. So the question is, uh, at spot macro, where would your capex be this year, and where could TCC be? Right. Hello, Nina. So we are disclosing the share of ruble and dollar denominated costs uh, when it comes to OPEX and CAPEX. So for CAPEX, 60% uh, is rubles and 40% is U.S. And for OPEX, including royalty, about 65% would be rubles and 35 would be dollars. So you can sort of infer the resultant uh, figure in dollars uh, um, plugging in different uh, forex uh, rate assumptions. But for the purpose of guidance and for the purpose of consistency of our disclosure, we are not changing our base, uh, base assumption. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That is understood. Thank you, Mish. Uh, you mentioned that you are comfortable with current CapEx and TCC guidance. So as you mentioned, now we have macro tailwinds on one side, and what are the headwinds that lead CapEx uh, expectations back to the previously announced range? Yeah, can you repeat the last part of your question. I'm sorry, I didn't quite get it. Uh, so the question is, we have um, uh, tailwinds from macro side uh, that decrease, effectively decrease your CapEx and TCC, uh, but uh, you nevertheless maintain uh, the range provided earlier this year, uh, which implies that uh, there are some headwinds that offset macro tailwinds that lead CapEx and TCC expectations back to your initial assumptions. Could you speak a bit about these um, factors? 
Now, that conclusion is inaccurate. So uh, we said that our TCC guidance remains unchanged at the base forex rate of 400 to 450. So, uh, which means that, so you uh, add the at the unchanged exchange rate of 60, our TCC is expected to be 400 to 450, i.e., if the forex rate is above 60, TCC uh, goes down. So we are not changing our assumptions. Mm -hmm. That is very clear. Thank you. And the second question is about your anti-money output and sales this year. Uh, can you provide an estimate of uh, anti-money output and sales in 2020? Yeah, sure. So, um, in terms of um, in terms of our sales of uh, anti-money rich concentrate, we expect to sell approximately 70 thousand tons, and that is expected to contain approximately 15,000 tons of antimony. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And a short follow-up on this. Uh, do you see any complexities in selling antimony to China now, and what is the average price of antimony in the market as compared to last year? No, we're not seeing any additional complexities uh, or difficulties uh, when it comes to shipment of the uh, outbound uh, concentrate. Uh, so we already sold about uh, 15,000 tons uh, in the in the uh, second quarter, uh, and uh, the spot price for Antimony is approximately 55, well, 5,000 to 5,500 dollars uh, per ton. And that's uh, about, I guess, 10% below the average last year. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for explanations. That is all for me. Thank you. Our next question comes from Anna Antonova, JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yes, hi. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, just a quick follow-up question from our side. Um, I remember you, uh, the management recommended uh, dividends for the full year 2019, which, however, uh, have not been yet uh, approved uh, by, by, I guess, the board and the shareholder meeting, which, which has not been uh, in place yet. And there has been no update on that uh, well, since the beginning of the year. Could you please comment on, on your uh, stance towards final dividends for 2019, when those are going to be approved or and whether you would uh, consider uh, cutting or amending the, the dividend amount earlier uh, mold by, by the management and the company. Thank you. Right, so on the dividends, uh, the board, uh, um, as we as we announced, uh, uh, sort of confirmed its intention to recommend uh, the the usual payout of 30% of EBITDA for the second half of 2019. Now, however, uh, the AGM uh, has been uh, deferred due to the state of emergency. Uh, in the country and uh, extraordinary conditions around KBU. So we currently expect a payout consistent with the dividend policy. However, AGM is taking place later and we expect that to uh, occur sometime in summer this year. Thank you. Thanks. Our next question comes from Anton Fedotov, Bank of America. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, one question on Olympiada. In the press release, you highlighted lower grades uh, in Olympiada. Uh, what's the outlook for the grades? Uh, what will be the dynamic for the next uh, couple of quarters and maybe a couple of years? Thank you. Right. Hi. So um, 
I mean, we said previously that uh, there will be step down in average uh, process grades uh, at Olympiade in uh, uh, in uh, um, 2020, and that's exactly what we're happening. However, they have been unusually low in the first quarter as we didn't have access to to reach or at the uh, deeper horizons of the third stage of the Vostochny pit. Uh, uh, so the process grades uh, stood at 3.2 grams per ton, and uh, they are expected to recover in the remaining uh, nine months. However, the average for 2020 will be still uh, meaningfully below the average for 2019. So we already saw an improvement in process grades and mine grades in April and May compared to the average in the uh, first quarter. And that's uh, facilitating a cost improvement uh, at uh, Olympiad as well. I mean, I'm, I'm not willing at this point to give an exact number of the, uh, of the process grades in April and May. Again, but I can tell you that there was a recovery compared to, uh, to first quarter levels, as we expected. Thank you. Anton, was your question answered? Answered. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Our next question comes from Timothy Remington Barclay. Please go ahead. Hi there. Thanks for your time this morning. Um, so I had a, a question about uh, your sales of gold. Um, so. Firstly, we saw that the CBR announced that it suspended purchases of gold, and we understand that there are uh, bottlenecks with getting physical bullion to um, to mints and to to where there's demand for it. So, can you give us any more uh, insight into anything you're seeing on that side? Have you faced any any issues directly um, uh, from your you know your new normal sales channels? Um, and then the second part of the question is, uh, we had reports that the uh, the government were looking at extending export uh, licenses to miners themselves, so you'd be able to export gold directly. Uh, do you have any update on that, or um, has this already? Uh, are you able to do this already, or do you expect to be able to do it soon? Thank you. All right. So in terms of our traditional sales channels, they are mm, sort of unchanged. So indeed, the Central Bank of Russia stopped uh, purchasing uh, gold from the domestic banks, and uh, it took uh, a while for the local banks to sort of establish uh, export channels, uh, given uh, um, sort of reduced air transportation. So once uh, charter planes were arranged. Uh, the exports of uh, gold to the largest hubs, uh, mainly in Switzerland, uh, have been fully uh, resumed. So we are continuing to sell to uh, local banks all of, all of our volumes, and uh, these volumes are then uh, exported uh, by, by the uh, commercial banks. So there has been no uh, interruption and the uh, payment terms uh, are broadly unchanged versus what we had prior to the uh, sort of global virus um, outbreak. That's first. Uh, second, in terms of uh, uh, the possibility to export uh, uh, gold uh, doré ourselves or refined gold uh, ourselves. Now, under the uh, existing legislation, uh, Companies can export, but you have to uh, receive uh, a license specific to a, a particular uh, shipment, uh, which is a fairly cumbersome pro uh, process. Now, uh, the recent uh, legislative uh, changes uh, enabled miners to get a so-called general license, which uh, uh, will allow us to uh, export uh, uh, material without uh, a receipt of a, of a license specific to any particular shipment. Now, we have applied for such a general license. We expect uh, to receive a general license uh, sometime in summer. But again, uh, at this point, uh, you know, the uh, traditional and conventional uh, sales channels via commercial banks 
uh, in our view, are optimal, both from the payment and logistics uh, perspective. Thank you. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, if you wish to ask a question, please press zero one on your telephone keypad. Thank you for holding. As a reminder, if you wish to ask a question, please press zero one on your telephone keypad. Thank you for holding. We have a question from Andrew Jones Wooden Call. Please go ahead. Hi, just a quick one on <clears throat> on Olympiada grades. You were talking about uh, obviously having to delay stripping works uh, as a result of this current um, crisis. Uh, can you give us you know an idea as to you know how that potentially could impact on 2021 production? I mean, is it? Um, I mean, which areas of the pit are being most impacted by this? I mean, is it typically higher grade zones or, or I mean, basically, could you give us an idea about, you know, approximately how much this could potentially negatively impact your your volumes or grades for 2021? Thanks a lot. I would not give you uh, uh, details on how it's going to impact a production in 2021 or 2022 since we are reassessing and assessing that ourselves at this point. Uh, however, delayed stripping may uh, result in uh, lower capacity uh, to reach uh, uh, high-grade ore zones uh, uh, when it comes to uh, mining. So that can potentially impact uh, production levels. Now, uh, in order to mitigate that, we'll be recalibrating our uh, mining scheduling. Uh, so we need uh, some time to reassess that and uh, uh, run various sequencing uh, scenarios uh, to maximize output. So once that is done, we will, we will announce to the market our, our, um, our position on the matter. Thank you. Mm. Just, just as a as a quick follow up, I mean, in terms of your raw stockpiles, you've obviously accumulated a lot of lower grade ore. But do you have um, any sort of reasonable sized stockpile of decent grade material that could uh, that could essentially you know, plug the gap if there is a shortfall in in mine volumes, or is it all very low grade stuff? We have significant medium and low grade stockpiles on site. Which uh, make part of the of the of the blend, and uh, this is uh, also um, an integral part of our uh, mining scheduling. Always, thank you. Okay, thank you. As we have no further questions, dear speakers, back to you for the conclusion. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you guys for joining our call. Uh, will we have any follow-up questions? Yeah, just 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 send us an email. Thanks a lot. Uh, have a good day and stay safe. Cheers. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance. This call has been concluded. You may now disconnect.